you can hear me loud and clear, please type yes in the chat box. Great, thank you. So um, good morning and thank you for joining us for the Journal Voucher eForm webinar. My name is Kathy Blackburn and joining me today is um, Jason Bayshore and Adriana Hartley. And we're gonna walk you through the new process for Journal Voucher eForms. Today, we're gonna talk about what a Journal Voucher eForm is. We're gonna talk about and walk through how to create one how to update one, how to approve it and view it, and then we will talk about where to find the resources in the presentation. What is a journal voucher e-form? Journal voucher e-forms are used in PeopleSoft to adjust or correct posted and paid AP vouchers. Journal vouchers are zero amount vouchers and all adjustments made must have a zero effect on the voucher. These adjustments may include, but are not limited to, changing of departments, funds, accounts, projects, et cetera. And the journal voucher e-form um, links the JV to the original voucher. But please note that all single pay expense vouchers with a supplier ID that starts with an SP, those are processed via journal entries and not JVE forms. Um, the E form actually will not allow you to um, even pull one up. We will, um, when we get done walking through this process, we will actually go out into PeopleSoft and do an example. Um, so, how do you create a journal voucher E form? They're created within PeopleSoft. The navigation is main menu, USC Finance E forms. Um, journal voucher e-form. When you get to that page, it'll give you four different options. It'll give you an option to add, to update, to approve, and to view. So in order to create one, you're gonna click on the add journal voucher tab, and you're gonna enter your original voucher ID number in the box that says begins with. Once you input that information, um, you will then click on the search button It'll bring you a list of um, matching ID numbers and their associated supplier ID and supplier name. And you're gonna note that if you were to try to put in a single pay voucher ID number, it would not display for you on that page. Um, so once you've typed in your voucher ID number, you're gonna wanna hit the search button. And when you do, um, it'll bring up a distribution details page. Um, and we're gonna walk through all the different areas in that distribution details page. The first section is the transaction information. Um, this, you can view but not modify it. It gives you the supplier ID and name, the original voucher ID number, what your new invoice number will be, and of course shows that you're making the change. And then you will see an effective date that should always default to today and it must fall within an open accounting period. So once you've validated that you have the right supplier ID and supplier, um, you're ready to go to the next section, which is your current distribution. So this is gonna show you your current lines on your voucher. So in this particular voucher, the example that we have, there's only one line on that voucher. Um, and as you can see, it's showing you the full chart field information and the dollar amount on the voucher. And it gives you an option to select that. So in this example, we would want to make a change to that particular line. So we would then select that. It will go from a no to a yes. And then that will take that current distribution line and it will populate it now to our new distribution line, as you can see it down here. So once you've selected that line from your current distribution line, it will copy it down to your new distribution line it will change the sign. So in this case, it's, it's a negative or a credit. And then it, your chart field information will be read only because that you're not gonna change. Um, and then if you're, you would then take that particular line from your original voucher, click your copy button, it would copy it down again, reverse the signs, and then open up all the fields for you to make the change. 
And in this case, you could change or reallocate the full dollar amount. You could reallocate a portion of it. You could change the department, the fund, um, the account that it was on, the class. This isn't showing it, but you could also change the project if you needed to. Um, once you've made those changes, the next thing that it will require you to do is to put a justification. This comment is required. You put that justification in the more information box. Um, that justification then will transfer over to the comment section on your new voucher. After you put in your justification, it will then require an attachment. So that attachment could be what you normally send in for your JVs. That attachment will be required. You'll click on that upload button, go out and find where your attachment is, load it. Um, it will then not allow you to delete that attachment, but you can replace it if you attached the wrong thing. And then the different types of documents that will allow you to attach are listed above. They can be a Word document, Excel, a PDF, um, a text file. So now um, you've gone into your voucher. You've seen your current distribution lines. You've selected the line that you wanted to change. You've added in a justification. You've attached your um, file or your attachment. Now it gives you an option to add in any type of additional comments. This is, is completely optional and um, it does not go to the new voucher. So if there's something that you wanted to have your approver see, just that, um, you would put that in that comment box um, and then they'd be able to see it whenever they viewed it before they approved your, um, your new journal voucher e-form. So now you've pretty much filled out your full form and if you tried to submit it at this point and you were missing something, um, it would give you a form validation warning. Um, if the effective date was not in the current accounting period, it would not allow you to, to submit it. If you left a required field blank, um, it would make you go back and fill that in. If your net effect of your new journal voucher was not zero, it would give you a warning. Um, it would make you attach something. So the example on this page is showing you that um, my new distribution merchandise amount netted to a negative $15.50, so it's not zero. So it's telling me that I must go back in and make that equal to zero before I'm able to, to submit it. So once you have um, cleared out all your validation warnings, you're at a point now where you can save and or submit. So if you save the form, um, it, it's just there out there waiting for you to make any adjustments to. You can go back in in your update journal voucher search and make those adjustments and then submit it. So once you do submit it though, it, it then does route for approval and it goes through a workflow. So you'll choose either save or submit. Um, if for example, we had chose save and not submit, because we weren't sure um, maybe what department to, to key that to, and maybe we had a meeting to go to and we needed to come back to it, we would hit the save button. And then that would allow us to go back into that and then update that with whatever additional information we needed to. In order to update, you're gonna go through the same navigation path, which is main menu, USC finance e-forms, journal voucher e-forms, and then you're gonna click on update journal voucher tab and it will bring you to a search page. On this search page, you can put in all kinds of different information to pull up what you're looking for. Normally what I'll do is just hit the search button. If you just hit the search button, it's gonna show you anything that's available for you to make an adjustment to. When you hit that search button, um, it's gonna show you, so in this example, you can see that that's me and it's showing me that I have three different journal voucher e-forms that are out there for me um, that I can make an adjustment to. And then I'm going to select one of those and bring it up. Once I select it, um, it'll then allow me to update it and I can either resave it or I can submit it. 
So if my status was impending, that means that it was submitted and not fully approved, but I can go out there and update those voucher um, lines and I can resubmit it, which would put it back through that workflow, or I can hit withdraw. If I hit withdraw, that will completely remove that for me. It will basically kill that journal voucher. It won't allow me to go back in and make um, any changes or submit it through the workflow. Um, if the status is saved, it means it's been saved and not submitted at all. Those journal voucher lines can be updated and then it would give me the option to save, withdraw, or submit. Once again, save means that you have not put it through the workflow. Withdraw means that maybe you selected the wrong voucher number and you're gonna kill that particular journal voucher. And submit means that you've now decided to put it through the workflow. Um, at this point, we're gonna go out to PeopleSoft and do a couple of examples. Do we have any questions before we do that? No? Okay, I'm gonna move on over to PeopleSoft. Now I've already signed in and I'm actually in a test environment. So I'm gonna start by um, doing a straightforward journal voucher e-form. My navigation is main menu, USC finance e-forms, journal voucher e-forms. When I click on this, it's not gonna show it. Um, I am going to, it gives me four choices. It, I can add my journal voucher e-form. I can update it, approve it, or view. So in this case, I'm gonna add, and I'm already there. I'm gonna key in my original voucher number. I'm gonna do that real quick. Once I key that in, I'm gonna hit my search button. You're going to see it populates the supplier ID and supplier name. And now it brings me to that distribution detail page that we had walked through before. That first section is that transaction information. Um, this is pretty much view only. It's giving you the supplier number and the supplier name. Um, it's giving you your original voucher number. And this is going to end up being your invoice number on your new voucher and it's saying who's requesting it, which is me, and your effective date, which is your accounting date, which will default to today's date and should always be in an open accounting period. Second section is that current distribution line. So those are all the lines on your voucher. In this particular voucher, I just have one line. Um, and then if I go all the way over to the right, you're gonna see where it'll allow me to select that line because I'm gonna make a change on it. In this case, I'm gonna change the department um, and I'm only gonna allocate $500 to a different department. So I'm gonna select my selection. It's gonna go from a no to a yes and you're gonna see it automatically populated down in that new distribution section um, and then it changed the sign. So it went from a debit to a credit. So I have a credit of $5,445.48. And if you can see, um, it has now, um, I have a, only a read access to my chart field here because this is where I'm moving that money. So in this case, instead of moving that full 5,000, I'm only gonna move 500 of it. So I'm gonna change that dollar amount. And I'm gonna move 500 of that to a different department. So I have two options here. I can copy that down, which is what I will do, or I could just insert a brand new line. If I copy it down, it's going to copy down the amount and change the sign. And it's gonna also copy down my full chart field amount. If I had hit the plus sign, it would just, it would just insert an empty line and I'd have to key all of that information in. So here I'm going to go in and the only change that I want to make on this particular journal voucher is I want to change that department. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to change this department here and it's going to be 1500. And that is the only thing that I want to change on this particular one. I'm going to go in and now it's going to require me to put in a justification and we're just going to say test. And it's going to ask me to add an, an attachment. 
So to do your attachment, it's showing you all the different attachment types that you can have. I'm going to click on my upload. It's going to ask me to click on my device, and this is going to take me out to my system. And I just have a test attachment there. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to hit upload. It's going to do the upload complete. I'm going to hit done. And as you can see, it's attached my, um, it's put in my attachment. The last thing I can look at is my comments. Remember, this comment section will not go to your new voucher. It would be something if you needed to add something just for your approvers to see. So you could add as needed here. Right, and now I am completely done um, with my new journal voucher. Um, I can either save it or I can submit it. Save it means I'm gonna come back to it and make an adjustment. Submit it means it's gonna go through the workflow. So in this particular example, I'm gonna just save it because we're gonna go back and we're gonna make an adjustment to it. So I'm gonna hit my save button. It's gonna tell me that I've saved it. Um, and now I'm gonna go back in, go back into my choices. And before we go and update that particular one, we're gonna go out and do another example. Um, this example is gonna show you a project in multiple lines of your voucher. Um, so I'm gonna once again, key in a new original number. Voucher number. And then I'm going to hit my search button. It's going to bring it up, show me my supplier and my supplier name. Once again, you get that transaction information. You see your supplier number, your supplier name, your original um, voucher number, and your new invoice number. And of course, your effective slash accounting date. And in this particular one, as you can see, this actually has two lines on the original voucher. And we're just going to make an adjustment to, to one of the lines. You could do both. Um, on this one, though, I'm just going to select the top line. You're going to see that it copies it down just like it did before. Um, and now I'm going to actually change that project. So that project was wrong. I'm going to hit my copy down. and I'm going to change that full amount instead of a partial amount. I'm going to move it over and just change my project here. So I'm going to get rid of that whole project, put in my new one. So I have my new project in there. I've made all the adjustments that I need. I'm going to go down and put in my justification, which we'll put in test again. I'm going to add um, an attachment. Click on my device. Click on my attachment that's sitting out there. Click on upload. It's uploaded it. Click done. Um, in this particular case, I'm not going to add any comments. And here I'm going to now just submit this. So I'm going to submit it. It's going to tell me that it's been submitted. And now it's moved on to the next um, step for approval. So here, let's look at what that approval looks like. So it'll allow me to view the approval routing. As you can see, this was a um, USCSP. So it's gonna go to the sponsored program group. Then it's gonna go to the department. It'll get routed to GFM. And then it's going to um, go to the controller's office. So that lets you get a quick look at what that approval routing looks like. So I'm gonna click done. I'm gonna now go back. And if you remember that first example that we looked at, um, we only saved it because I wanted to be able to go back in and make an adjustment. So I, I can do that by clicking on the update journal voucher. And on here, it gives you lots of different choices to try to pull it up. I could use that original voucher ID number, the from voucher ID number, but I usually like to just hit my search button and it'll bring up for me all the different vouchers that are out there that I could make an adjustment to. So in this particular case, it happened to be this one. This was the original voucher number. So I'm going to click on it. And it's just in a saved status. 
saved means that all I've done is saved it. Pending is that you've actually put it through the workflow. So now I can go in and once again, see my transaction information, my current distribution line. So here's my distribution line here that we had already made a change. And what I realize now is that instead of um, allocating it to one department, I actually need to allocate it to two. Um, I need $250 into two different apart departments. So this, in this case, instead of hitting that copy button, I'm gonna go all the way over and hit the plus. And the plus is gonna open up another line for me. And, but it will force me then to key in all that information where the copy down would have copied that chart field information. So here I'm going to actually move or make that change to 250 for this department. And we're going to do 250 for the next department. This here. I'm going to type in the rest of my chart field information. And here. There we go. Put in my department. Put in my fund. And my account. And my class. I've put in everything that I needed. Um, we already had a justification and an attachment. In this particular case, we had put in a comment. You can see that down here. We could put in another one if we wanted to. Now the option is allowing me to either save it, withdraw it if I picked the wrong voucher ID number, or submit it. So in this particular case, I'm going to submit it. And it's telling me that I've successfully done that, did not give me any warnings. And then if I click here, I can look at the, um, the workflow routing. And in this case, there were no projects on this. So it's just going to your department level approver. And then it's going to um, the controller's office to get approved. So now I am done updating and submitting those two examples. We're going to go back to the PowerPoint for just a minute. Do we have any questions on what we've done so far? Okay, so I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint. And now we're going to talk about approving. So to approve um, a journal voucher e-form, you can approve it in a couple of different ways. You will receive, your approvers will receive um, an email with a link on it that they can click on the link and I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. Or they could go into the navigation of main menu USC Finance eForms and Journal Voucher eForms and click on the Approve Journal Voucher tab. And then they will get a search page where they can find whatever vouchers are ready for their approval. Um, if they, they could find it by any one of those choices or just hit the search button and the search button would bring up um, whatever's available for them to approve. So once they hit that search button, as you can see, it brought up two different choices for them to approve. They would click on the one voucher that they um, wanted to approve, then they would review that document, and they would have the option to deny it, recycle, put it on hold, or approve. Deny means they're basically going to kill it. It won't be available again. Recycle means that um, it will go back to the creator and that person would then be able to make any changes to it. Hold would prevent anyone else in the approval queue from approving it and would allow either the approver or the creator to make a change and resubmit. And then of course, approve means it moves on through the workflow. Um, once you've approved it, the voucher will then move on to the next step. All right, so let's look at the couple of different ways that you can approve um, your journal voucher e-form. So you will receive an email. Um, the email will look like this. 
Um, it will have a link that you can click on. So you'll click on that link. And of course, this will automatically bring that up for you. I'm already signed into PeopleSoft. If you had not been signed into PeopleSoft, um, it would have asked you to sign in first, but because we're in this test environment, I'm already in that. Um, it'll bring you up to that distribution details page, walk you through the transaction information, which is giving you the supplier number and the supplier name, the original voucher number and who's actually doing it. It'll show um, the original or the current distribution and the new distribution of where you're wanting that information to be reallocated. It will show the justification and any type of support document that you have. Um, if you click on the support documentation, you can pull that up, click open. That's gonna bring you whatever um, type of document that you have in there. Um, you can review that and then close it take you back to that page, and if there were any comments, you would see it. As an approver, then you get those three options, you get those four options of denying it. You can recycle it, put it on hold, or approve. So in this case, we're gonna hit the approve button. It's gonna tell you that it has been um, successfully approved. And then if you would like, it'll show you whatever that routing number is. So it's showing that I approved it and now it is um, in the workflow now going to the controller's office. So once I'm done with that, the other option that we could do um, is we could go in through our normal navigation. Let me go back to what that is, which is main menu, USC finance e-forms, journal voucher e-form, give you the four options and you could hit that approve button that gives you multiple ways to search, or you can just hit your search button and your search button will bring you any and everything that you have out there that you can approve um, at your level. So we'll pick one of these. All of these are impending, of course, means that the creator had created it and they submitted it and it's in the workflow ready for me to approve. So I'm gonna click on the last one walk through that again it's showing you your transaction information your current or original chart um your current or original distribution where you're trying to reallocate that the justification for it the fact that there is supporting documentation and we could click on that but but we just did a few minutes minutes ago and then it's giving you the four options of what to do to deny recycle hold or approve. So once again, we're gonna hit the approve button. It's gonna say that I've approved it and I can hit that routing. It's gonna show that I've approved it and now it's gonna move on to the next level. All right, I'm gonna go back to here. And now um, any questions on approving? All right, we're gonna walk back to the PowerPoint. And lastly, we're gonna talk about viewing. Um, there is an option for you to go out and view whatever is sitting out there um, in whatever status. So you can use the navigation of main menu, USC finance e-forms, journal voucher e-form, and then click on the view journal voucher tab. On that, um, once you do that, it will give you a search page and you can search from any of the following categories or just click the search button. When you click the search button, it's gonna allow you to select from one of the vouchers from the list. And you're gonna notice here that the from voucher ID is your original voucher number. And the just voucher ID is any new voucher number that's happened once something has been executed. And executed means it's been fully approved. And this is giving you all the different form statuses. So let's look at what those mean. So form statuses are, if it's saved, that means the journal voucher has not been submitted. If it's withdrawn, that means that the creator of the journal voucher has canceled that voucher. Pending is the JV has been submitted and it's waiting on approvals. Recycled is when an approver has returned the voucher to the creator and only the creator is able to make changes to the voucher and resubmit. Denied is that an approver has denied the voucher and it will not be able to be resubmitted. On hold 
is when an approver has put the voucher on hold, the creator or the approver can make changes to the voucher and resubmit through the Update Journal Voucher tab. And Executed is when it's been fully approved and you now have a new voucher ID number. When it, um, once you select something from your list, when you've gone to your View tab, you cannot make any changes to that. It's literally just an option to view it. So now let's look at what that looks like. I'm going to go back out to PeopleSoft. Okay. So once we're here, if I was to hit home and take you back, let's we can go through that navigation, which is main menu, USC Finance eForms, Journal Voucher eForm. You have your four options of add, update, approve, and view. So in this case, we're going to view. Um, you can select all different ways to pull up only a single voucher or just hit your search. When you hit your search, um, it brings up everything that's out there for you to look at. So you can pick anything within your list to look at. We'll look at one that's been executed. Once it's been executed, it will populate a brand new voucher ID number for you. So we'll look at this. Um, it looks identical to everything else we've seen today, but on this particular one, you can only view all the different areas, your transaction information, your current distribution, your new distribution lines, your justification, um, your attachment, and it will let you view that in any comments. Um, but it will not let you approve or do anything to it. Um, at this point, it is pretty much done. So let's go back. So now we have viewed it. We're going to move back to our PowerPoint. So um, this is where you're going to find any type of resources for this presentation. So after today's webinar, we will post um, a recorded webinar, webinar out on the PeopleSoft resource page. We will also post a copy of the PowerPoint presentation out there. Um, the new Journal Voucher eForms will go live on February 1st. And the folks that will have access to be able to do that are anyone who can do um, journal entries. So if you have a general accountant role in PeopleSoft, then you will automatically be given the role to do journal voucher eForms. If you currently do not do journal entries, but you do submit journal vouchers, um, you will need to go to the PeopleSoft security um, and submit a security form. You would go, um, you would go into PeopleSoft, um, go down to view users, and then it's then there's a, there's a little link for that new PeopleSoft security form. You can pull that up and go to the other section, click other, and then um, type in what access you want. And that would be for the new journal voucher eForm. But remember, if you currently do journal entries and you already have the general accountant role, you will automatically be given the role to do journal voucher eForms. Um, and that will go live on February 1st. Um, you will not see it in production until that time. Um, if you have any questions going forward, please um, continue to email the AP Journal Voucher um, email address that's listed below. And do you have any questions? No questions? Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning.